Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian, or Prince Caspian, Chronicles of Narnia? Which one are you going for? Does it matter? Well, Prince Just Caspian. Prince really Caspian, Chronicles of all. Narnia. Okay, so the second Narnia movie, the second Narnia book to have been written, but I think the fifth in the actual chronological developmental thing. Whatever, whatever. you say, Doctor. You know, so basically, here's the story. So the kids are back in, uh, in, in wartime. If Britain. the kids are united, we will never be divided, divided, as I think Jimmy Percy so eloquently once said. So the kids are back in wartime Britain, a tube train. They haven't been back to Narnia for a long time. They're really fed up with the fact they have Because if you remember in the last film, the last film ended with they have a golden age, a golden reign, then they come back through the wardrobe, and then they're really, really young again. The, Uncle says you're never going to get back into there and then the wardrobe closed. So they're on the station platform, train comes in, they get magically sucked into Narnia, whence they have been called. They arrive in Narnia to discover that the golden age over which they formerly presided has now gone. It is way back in the distant past and Narnia has now been overrun by human tulmarines, one of whom, the handsome, the very handsome, the look at his hair, he's so handsome, he's actually the Prince Charming out of Shrek only with different colour hair. Nice. There's a lot of fringe waving and there's a lot of shoulder there. Anyway, he has, he has recently escaped from a plot to kill him by the evil king. And he is, in the end, going perversely to be one of the people that helps save Narnia. Now, the interesting thing about the first Narnia film was that it was widely dismissed. And I have to say that I fell into this as well as being Lord of the Rings light. You know, it didn't have darkness at all. It was a very, very light, whimsical confection. And in fact, over the years, that light whimsy has kind of grown on me, partly because I've seen how much kids enjoy it on video, and partly because it is, that is the nature of the story. It's not a very dark story. I mean, it is a Christian parable, clearly, with Aslan, everybody waiting for Aslan to come back, and then Aslan comes back, and then Aslan is sacrificed, and then he rises from the dead, blah de blah blah fine, all that. And in fact, having now seen the original Chronicles of Narnia several times, several times on and, the... And the, and the family instruction. Well, it's, you know, it's just, it's on in the house. It's impossible not to keep... So it's, I, I, I have rather warmed to it. Now, in the case of the second one, they, they do a number of things. The first is they attempt to darken things up because the story becomes a slightly darker narrative. It is about the children ageing to some extent, but it's about an age having passed. It's also rather more muddled. I mean, the film is 2 hours and 20 minutes long, and I have to say from the outset that if you're playing to a younger audience, 2 hours and 20 minutes is a big ask, and I think it's too long. I think there is at least 20 minutes that they could have lost. I think there's an awful lot of establishing stuff at the beginning that's frankly a little bit boring. There's also then, when we get into the darker passages, there are the big battle scenes that are shot in this dark, brooding, moody, you know, blues and browns and greys. And it, all it does is it reminds you how much this isn't Lord of the Rings. And in fact, the great charm of the original was that it was light and frothy and that that pizzazz, that sort of, that sense of it being in the end of kids' fantasy was probably its great redeeming feature. Now, having said that, I don't think this is a bad film. I mean, I think it is a lot better and a lot more successful than the Golden Compass movie, which took the source material and really just let it fall apart in its hands. All the stuff that was going in it on in those source novels just never made it into that Golden Compass movie, and as a result of which, I don't think anybody's entirely sure what the future of the Golden Compass projected triology, as they like to say in America, is. Well, really? So subtle knife might not happen? No, I think, I think it's going to have to happen, but I don't know when it will happen and how it will happen. I mean, it's, you know, I, immediately afterwards, after the, the sort of the, the financial failure of Golden Compass, everyone was saying, well, are we going to go on? Where are we going to go from here? You know, what are we going to do? I mean, I think it will have to play out, but the question is how it will play out. Now, in the case of this, it's too long. There is a little bit of a problem that I think that not all the acting is particularly great. Some of it is is, is a little bit wooden. Although um, that Georgie Henley, the, the little girl who plays Lucy, is really charming and really funny as she was before. Plus, you get Peter Dinklage, who's absolutely terrific. is one of my favourite actors. I think he's great, and he's you know gruff and grumpy in a way which only he can do. And then you get Eddie Izzard doing the voice of one of the a swordsman mouse. Although he is essentially doing the same voice that he did in Five Children and It when he was It, you know. Is that animated voice that he does? I, 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 what? I, what? And then so he does all that, and it. The whole thing has this sense of, I want to like it more. I want it to be shorter. I want it to work for the kids who enjoy the first movie so much. It's not a masterpiece. It is baggy. The magic is not there in the way that perhaps it was in the first one, or at least the very, very young magic of the first one. Interestingly enough, BBFC gave it a PG rating. The BBFC say, they note that, the violence in the film is a little stronger than The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, but it still falls within the PG classification because in the end, although it doesn't have quite the shiny, happy surfaces of the original, it is still very much PG fair, and I'd say it's boring borderline PG-12 because there's a lot of fighting. Uh, and then the narrative has that terrible sense of deja vu. You're waiting for Aslan to come back, you're waiting for Aslan to come back, you're waiting for Aslan to come back, and then you know what? 
Does he come back? He comes back. So I wonder now how the rest of this is all going to pan out. There's one more. If the next movie is um, is it is it Voyage of the Dawn of Silver Chair? I can't remember which is the next one. There's one more which has got the kids in it, which has got Prince Caspian in it. Whether or not they'll then go beyond that to do the rest of the books, I think is frankly anybody's guess. I noticed that both Dawn Treader, Voyage of the Dawn Treader, and Silver Chair are both allegedly in production or in pre-production according to the IMDb. But I think there's one more film in this, and then that's it.